Friedrich Nietzsche was a German philosopher, cultural critic, composer, poet, and philologist, and his work has had a profound influence on modern intellectual history. Nietzsche was one of the main precursors of existentialism, and he believed that there are no absolute rules for human life, no absolute values, no certainties on which to rely, and he famously said that God is dead, God remains dead, and we have killed him. In other words, we have to live like there's nothing else beyond life. Nietzsche's philosophy is about reaffirming life, calling for a radical, naturalistic rethinking of the nature of human existence, knowledge, and morality. After the death of God, we need to take control of our own destiny by molding ourselves into something greater, into superhumans, the most English translation of the word Übermensch in German. In Nietzsche's view, the superhuman is not necessarily physically strong or super smart, but is psychologically superior. Superhumans are those free spirits who have mastery over their emotions, who take joy in simply existing, and who create above all else. As well as this, they're able to confront the dragon, which is a multicultural symbol representing the strength of the culture and values of a society. A free spirit, a superhuman, is the one who can defend the influence of the dragon, the one who can create their own values breaking the chains of society and culture in which they were raised. In his book, Thus Spake Zarathustra, Nietzsche lays out three metamorphoses that the individual must go through to become superhuman. Using allegorical imagery, he describes the metamorphoses as the camel, the lion, and finally the child. Which is why in this video, we're going to explore these three metamorphoses to better understand how we can all become superhuman according to the philosophy of Friedrich Nietzsche. Number 1. Camel Metamorphosis Nietzsche says, What is difficult? asks the spirit that would bear much, and kneels down like a camel wanting to be well loaded. What is most difficult, O heroes? asks the spirit that would bear much, that I may take it upon myself and exult in my strength. The camel is the first metamorphosis of the spirit. The camel represents a strong spirit, capable of taking heavy burdens and traveling long distances in lonely deserts, surviving a harsh life. Not many people can undertake this journey, and even fewer do. Usually, most prefer having a comfortable life without stress or hard work. By avoiding risk, they follow the standard template for living, the local societal rules and moral codes, and sometimes they break the rules when it's convenient for them, without having too much moral integrity. A camel, by contrast, is different. The camel takes societal rules and moral codes very seriously, trying to become a person of good moral values, a role model, a person of integrity and honor. In Nietzsche's allegory, the societal rules and moral codes are represented by a golden dragon. These rules and codes can be religious or humanistic values, or ideas like every man is created equal, care and empathy towards others, the right of everyone to have an opinion, condemning violence, taxing the rich, or, on a more mundane level, societal norms such as you're supposed to be polite, you're supposed to go to college, you're supposed to get a real job. You're supposed to have children and start a family. In other words, a camel is what would be referred to today as good citizenship, or being a decent human being. A person who wants to take these most respected values extremely seriously and embodies them in all of their actions and words. It follows the deep roots of all the more general values driving society as a whole. So, to become a camel, you must know your dragon. The dragon represents everything that you admire and the values that have been implanted by your parents or by society as being good. But why would anyone undertake such a pursuit? Why would anyone follow the dragon? Well, the father of psychoanalysis, Sigmund Freud, whose work was greatly influenced by Nietzsche, has an answer for this. The dragon is the superego which is part of Freud's structural model of the psyche. 
Formed at about the age of five, the dragon represents a personality component which makes us behave morally in life. It's where all the unwritten rules of what it means to be a good person are, all the moral values that our parents and society taught us. When we obey these rules, when we obey the dragon, we feel a sense of pride and accomplishment. And when we don't, we feel guilty and ashamed. A camel is an individual who goes to extremes, trying to follow and obey as much as possible the dragon, going on a path which it thinks leads to the highest rewards in terms of pride and accomplishments. Unfortunately, most people fail to reach the camel stage. They don't live up to their ideals. They don't have clear role models or a clear set of values in life. They follow the new trends in society, indulging themselves in comforting but meaningless life, empty of strong values. To differentiate yourself from the herd, to stop being a sheep following random shepherds, you have to start carrying true values in life. You have to follow your dragon. To discover your personal dragon, make two lists. A list of everything you consider good and bad in life, based on what your parents and society taught you, and a list of everyone you admire – leaders, artists, scientists, athletes, and so on. Then try to find a common ground between them. As an example, you may realize that you admire Nelson Mandela, and what you consider good is respecting human rights, great leadership, equality, diplomacy, confidence, and so on. In that case, to become a camel and to follow your dragon would mean for you to acquire deep knowledge of what good leadership means, human rights, and to learn to be a confident public speaker. Everyone has their own dragons, and so the camel metamorphosis is different for each of us. But the camel is not the end phase and has some limitations. Although it has faith in its capabilities, the camel doesn't question the values and obligations imposed upon it. It's a nice guy that doesn't ruffle feathers. The camel only proves his strength and power by conforming to the subconscious rules he lives and thinks by. In other words, the camel is a great player in the matrix, following the game's rules in an excellent way. Winning quest after quest in the matrix, the camel explores experiences and learns, but ultimately it will always be a prisoner of that matrix, no matter how successfully it plays the game. Some can live their entire lives as successful camels, living in this self-imposed jail. However, some camels can wake up and understand the meaninglessness of their lives, how meaningless it is to live according to somebody else's values. Thus, they can start their own transformation, becoming lions and breaking free from the Matrix. Number 2. Lion Metamorphosis Nietzsche asks us, Who is the great dragon whom the spirit will no longer call Lord and God? Thou shalt is the name of the great dragon, but the spirit of the lion says, I will. If the camel follows its ideal, the lion tries to destroy this ideal. It confronts the dragon. For every thou shalt or you shall, the lion says no, standing against tradition and against any values that are imposed upon it. The lion destroys the things that the camel loves so much. But by destroying them, it destroys something inside itself. This can be a relationship that is oppressive or limits one's freedom or leaving a particularly good job because it requires compromising one's integrity and life principles. Both the camel and the lion are reactions to ideal values, one positive and the other negative. The transformation of the camel into a lion is essential, otherwise the camel will be ruined by its own quest. Saying yes to everything, no matter how noble, will destroy the camel's spirit in the end. The same is true in our real lives. If we do everything for others, trying to be the best role model, and we don't do anything for ourselves, we will succumb and be crushed. Each of us is unique, and this uniqueness cannot be expressed if you just follow the voices of other people ordering you in your head, telling you what's good and what's bad. You need to find your own meaning, your own individual mission in life, independent of your environment. 
To break free and to create your own values and meaning in life, you have to undergo this transformation. You have to go through this rebellious phase, like the lion in its attempt to gain its freedom. In Nietzsche's allegory, the lion, finding himself alone in the desert, encounters the dragon. The dragon is seductive. It sparkles with golden scales, and on each scale glitters a thou shalt. The thousands of scales represents thousands of years of the thou shalts that have come before us, the centuries of codes of how you ought to think and act. There are layers upon layers of moral codes formed in the entire history of humanity. But the dragon is the enemy of true self-mastery. And the lion wants to engage the dragon in mortal combat, rebelling against any thou shalt, refusing any oppression. The lion is the person committed to their own freedom, committed to expressing their individuality in its fullest, and thou shalt is a barrier to achieving this. When confronted by the dragon, the lion says, I will, but the dragon replies that all values are already created, each one forming a part of its golden scales, and the lion doesn't need to create new values. In fact, it is forbidden. Ultimately, the dragon says, there shall be no more I will. This lion cannot take it. The lion must then fight the dragon to win its freedom. During the fight, the lion roars the sacred no, which means a rejection of all the values that came before the lion. When the lion rages the sacred no to every thou shalt, this is the start of its freedom. The lion represents self-consciousness, aware of its independent power. Nietzsche went through the lion phase when he started to fight those people who disapproved of his life choices, including his family. As a consequence, he became stateless, jobless, and godless. But he gained the power to start to live his life on his own terms. He talked about the lion metamorphosis from his own experience, being convinced that to become a real free spirit, he must fight against anyone who tries to limit his freedom. To be able to transform your camel into a lion, you need to have the courage to break the chains of tradition, of religion, of society. Perhaps you even have to break up with several people in your life. As an exercise, make a list of everything and everyone you think limits your freedom to be yourself. It can be an unfortunate unwritten rule at your workplace. It could be your spouse who always tries to control and correct your behavior. It may be your friends who criticize you when you behave in a particular way. Once you've done this, try to think of possible strategies of how to change that situation. Maybe you can make a case in the team meeting at work regarding the problems you're experiencing. Perhaps you could have a serious talk with your spouse in which you can discuss the issue, how it bothers you, and how you'd like it to change. Or you could find new friends who can appreciate you better. Lion metamorphosis doesn't need to be a violent and sudden reaction. It can be a smart, calm, but definitive one. The superhuman, Nietzsche believed, was a true individual, one who must build self-mastery on his or her own terms. However, while a lion can create freedom for itself, it is still not capable of creating new values. And here the final metamorphosis comes into play, the child metamorphosis. Number three, child metamorphosis. To quote Nietzsche, for the game of creation, my brothers, a sacred yes is needed. The spirit now wills his own will, and he who had been lost to the world now conquers his own. In the final metamorphosis, the spirit becomes the child, the creator. After complete destruction of imposed morals and values, comes the creation of new values, new beginnings. The child doesn't have any resentments. They forget the past to create a new present and a brighter future. The child continuously creates their own new values and lives by them. They will their own will and don't impose their values on anybody else. The child metamorphosis can be interpreted by Nietzsche's affinity for the philosophy of Heraclitus. Heraclitus imagined a universe where everything is in an eternal state of becoming, 
and that time is a child playing, continuously creating and destroying. Similarly, in Nietzsche's view, a free spirit, being a part of this nature, is like a child at play in a state of permanent creation. To become a complete person, a free spirit and a superhuman, you need to get in touch with the child you were when you were playing. To love life beyond good and evil, creating your values and following your own rules of playing this game of life. The child phase is the phase of pure creativity, of being in a flow state, not having any restrictions regarding what's possible. For a child, everything is possible. They give a sacred yes to life. They're like a self-propelling wheel full of innocence and forgetfulness, creating their own rules. After the lion uttered the sacred no, the child comes out to shout a sacred yes that affirms life. Nietzsche was saying that people who can become more childlike are the storm clouds on which the superhuman will thunder. The goal of life is to create and ultimately to create the superhuman. To reach the child phase, you should not seek external answers and approval. You need to find the joy of life within, not worrying about the societal traditions and moral codes. You need to be confident, affirmative, creative in a permanent state of flux, forever changing and developing. Don't fixate on a specific identity. You don't need to talk, behave or dress in a certain way. You are the one who is choosing how to talk, behave and act in the world, and you can change your decisions as you please. As an exercise, try to think of those activities in which you can experience the flow state. For example, when you lead a team in a critical project at work, time spent painting in the quietness of home, or times when you're engaging with people and you feel like time is flying, or when you're deep in your work, developing ideas and creating innovative solutions. After having a clear picture of how you behaved in those activities, try to think what you can do to get yourself more into those states. Maybe the answer would be to stop being so critical of yourself, to let go, to remove the people who don't let you reach these states by imposing too many rules. Stop taking life too seriously. Experiment more. Try new ways of behaving in the world and new ways to spend your time in order to reach the flow state. If you're able to go through all of the three metamorphoses, the camel embracing the greatest ideals which were created before you, then the lion gaining your freedom from these ideals, and finally the child creating your own ideals and your own unique meaning of life, then you can become a true free spirit and a superhuman. Being a superhuman is not only an individual phenomenon, but also a collective one. The more people become superhuman, tapping into their unlimited potential, the more the entire world will come alive and flourish. So, if you enjoyed this video, please do make sure to check out the full Philosophies for Life channel. And for more videos to help you find success and happiness using ancient philosophical wisdom, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.